So first, I would like to thank you uh, very much for uh, joining this webinar. Uh, I will start with a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation. So during this webinar, we'll talk about the collaboration, how it works uh, in WordB. So I will start with a brief presentation of WordB collaborative uh, environment and features. Later on, I will present you uh, the many benefits of collaboration and finally I would like to show you through a demonstration how to create collaborative projects how does it work okay so I will show you uh, the different manners you can uh, manage collaborative projects so collaborative translation is made possible by technologies like WordB which allows all different participants of the translation cycle to work together in the same document at the same time. So uh, the, the idea is that the translator, the reviser, the project manager, the client, they are all involved in the project and they, and they can easily interact uh, with each other through WordB. And WordB brings this technology in a SaaS format, so it is a cloud-based uh, solution that suits the needs of large and small customers alike. So WordB collaborative features. Well, we propose concurrent access to same text by multiple users and real-time discussion. Well, I will just uh, name uh, the different points, list the, the different features and uh, it may not speak to you at first but later uh, during the demo I will present them more um, I will show you how it really works so you can split uh, documents and distribute each part separately to uh, different suppliers so it is a way to work in collaboration Another way is creating crowdsourcing projects. That uh, it's the point I will uh, focus on uh, during the demo, crowdsourcing. We have quality control, scoring and analysis also in the CAT editor. Uh, for the project manager, WordB allows text revision, tracking and history. This is really important. Inter interoperability and offline translation, easy versioning and multi-directional projects. This is also uh, very important and we will see this later during uh, the demo. And the preview of translated uh, documents. Now if I focus on the benefits of collaboration. Well, uh, proofreaders can work at the same time as translators shortening the cycle and reducing management difficulties created by splitting long documents. So, uh, well, I said proofreaders, but for example, you can imagine that translator and revisers can work at the same time because uh, the, the translator is um, beginning, has begun, has begun, sorry, <laughs> has begun to translate, and then the, the, tra the reviser can log on the system and start revising okay directly it doesn't have to wait that the translator has finished okay managers get total transparency they can work at the same time as translators and proofreaders so the manager can also work at the same time it can it can uh, track the work progress and interact with the different suppliers involved to answer questions and check work. Well, but there are many other benefits. Well, for example, customers, providers, or subject matter experts can log in to answer any questions directly on a document, cutting three or four emails from workflow. Well, again, that's the idea that everyone works on the same environment, and it reduces um, it reduces the, the turnaround times really uh, and you work more efficiently because the customer is invo the customer is involved it can it can answer questions etc so it is really a effective way of working 
communication between translator and proofreader happens in Word B, saving management time and aiding in tracking concerns. So uh, it repeats, it repeats uh, sorry, a little again uh, what I said uh, just before. So, and finally, no more tedious emails or sending files. Word B sends email for you and all the files are centralized. And I will add that they are centralized and uh, they are in a safe environment. Same thing for the emails. The emails you send through Word B are encrypted. It is much more secure than sending an email with a document, for example. So security is also very, very important. So uh, if you have questions during the demo or after the demo, well, I will save time to answer them, but if you think later on of, of uh, other questions, you can write them to me by email at asonier at wordbe.com. I will just leave you a, a few seconds to write my email address down. Okay, so I guess we're now ready for the demonstration. So I will close my PowerPoint presentation and I will connect to my WordB environment. So I'm connected to a, a team platform. So this is the home page of my uh, team platform. Well, uh, I would like first uh, to show you how you can create uh, logins for your suppliers for your internal suppliers or external suppliers uh, depending on your organization. Okay, so for uh, external suppliers, so for, for example, freelancers, click here on suppliers and then on new supplier. Okay, so the, the fields you have to uh, fill in uh, the mandatory fields are the one with a red asterisk. So I will uh, give a name. Uh, I will enter the name of the, my supplier, so Virginie Durand, and enter her email address. Well, as it is a, a fake supplier, I will just enter my email address. Okay, I can all add further information such as the, the type of supplier, so it is a freelance translator. I can, if I want, enter uh, the email address of my, uh, the, sorry, the address of my supplier, enter his or her country, leave comments, etc. But the mandatory fields are just the name and the email address. Well, to create a login to my supplier, I click here on create a login. Just enter the user last name, first name, and finally create a login and password. and retype password. And finally, you will have to select uh, the user profile. So for external suppliers, you will be able to choose between uh, three different profiles, so external worker, uh, external worker limited, and external manager. So the, free, uh, the three uh, profiles refer to uh, specific access rights that you are able to, um, to customize. You can add or remove certain uh, access rights. So for example, for a freelance translator, uh, the, I would say that the, the more common provider is external worker, okay, not external worker uh, limited, for instance. But uh, once again, uh, the profiles are completely customizable. So once I've finished, I click on Save here. And now I will enter the price list uh, of my supplier. 
so uh, I can give a name to the, the, the price list because I, I will be able to uh, enter different price lists if the supplier has multiple ones. But uh, let's say that for this supplier I have one price list, so standard price list is okay. I select a currency and I will here enter the discounts practiced by the supplier. So let's say that for uh, 100 person matches and in context matches, the discount practiced is 90%. And for 90 person matches or above, a 80 person discount. And maybe there is one more discount for 80 person matches or above of 60%. I can also enter the minimum charges if the supplier uh, has uh, minimum charges. And finally, I will click here on save to uh, enter the language pair and the task that the supplier um, can complete. So to do so, I just click here on add prices. I will select the source language of the supplier and the target language. If the supplier um, has multiple target languages, you can click here on select multiple languages and select multiple ones. For this supplier, let's say that her language varies from English to French. The task uh, is translation. Uh, there are multiple tasks, revision, proofreading, etc. And I can enter the price practiced per word. Okay, and click on here on add new. Um, I can uh, renew the operation if the supplier, for instance, uh, can also uh, revise from English uh, to French and again uh, enter the, the price practice per word, uh, etc. So here I have created a supplier, an external uh, supplier. Okay, see also if I click on the suppliers here, you will see uh, all, all my suppliers in here, Virginie Durand, which we have uh, created. So here you can see um, another tab named Supplier Groups. So I have created a multiple uh, supplier groups. So the idea is when I create a project, I will be able to assign the job to groups directly for a crowdsourcing job, uh, for instance, or to uh, send the job to a group and the first to accept will get the job. Okay, but you, you you create groups regardless of the um, of the language pair. Uh, for example, if you create a project from English into French, Word B will only uh, uh, will only send a not notification email to the supplier to the suppliers that will be able to complete the job. So you do not have to worry about the the language pair. So if I uh, select my preferred translators, here I can uh, edit it. So the job type is uh, translation. Okay, and here I can add a supplier. I will add the supplier we have just created. Okay, I will add uh, Virginie Durand to the group. Okay, so remember to create a login for an external supplier, just reach the Supplies tab and the New Supplier. And to create a Supply Groups, just click here on the Supply Groups tab and Add Group. Okay, N now I will briefly show you how to add um, an internal a supplier if, for example, you are um, an LSP, a language service provider, you may have uh, in internal uh, translators. So to assign them a login, 
just reach the My Company tab and then People and Logins. In here you, you will be able to uh, click on Add New and again, it is the same process, so I will not show show you again. It was just to let you know that for internal suppliers, you will have to uh, create them under the My Company tab and then People and Logins. Okay, what I would like to show you now is how to create a crowdsourcing job. So, um, I have received an order through the WordBee client portal from my client uh, Jerry. So if I select it, well, um, the the client uh, used the uh, the um, customized uh, order form of WordB. So I have uh, configured it so that. Um, I can directly see uh, how much the client will pay me for uh, this uh, for, for this project. <laughs> Sorry, that's why you see here uh, fifty-five point seventy-four euros. Okay, so I can see here uh, my client. I can see the the name he gave to the project. I can see the the language pair here and I can see uh, the document to translate. So I can see here a project tab. Uh, whenever um, an order uh, arrives in WordBee through the client portal, WordBee automatically creates a project. Okay, so if I click on project I can hear, I can see here again the the, pro, the project details. Well, through the client portal, uh, I've configured it so that uh, whenever uh, this particular client um, places an order, um, it is a pr the, the document is pre-translated with uh, his uh, translation memories. So everything um, is done already. I mean, the word count, the pre-translation, uh, etc. And, and the project uh, itself. The only thing I have uh, to do now is to assign the translation job to a supplier if I do not want to translate it myself, uh, of course. So what I have to do now is to reach the jobs tab of the project. In here uh, my client uh, only asked for a translation, uh, a, a translation so what I have to do now is click here on manage so a translation from English uh, to French okay. so we'll select uh, here translation only for the workflow and I will just have to click here on the three dots icon to uh, sorry to assign the job to a specific supplier if I want, to groups of suppliers, but in this case um, WordBee uh, sends a notification email to all the to the, the, the person that, that are able to complete the translation from French to English and the first one who accepts will get the job or I can send, send a crowd sourcing job. In this case um, well, I will I will do it, and, and you'll see. Uh, in this case, uh, if I select a, gr a group, so for example, my preferred translators. So there are four supplies in the group. In this case, the first one who accepts the job will open the job, and the three others will not have to uh, accept. They will be able to directly enter the job and translate. Okay, so the four suppliers will work on the document. Okay, so I click here on my preferred translators. I select. And I can change the, the status 
of the job to in progress. And I can check send email notifications so that the suppliers are notified immediately of the job. I click here on Save Changes. And I can now close this page. What I propose you is now to connect as a, a translator, accept uh, the job and start working on WordB CAT environment. So I will log out and log in as a supplier. Okay, so um, so I I have connected as a, a translator. So maybe I went too fast. So from the home page, so I can see here uh, a, a job. So it is the job that we uh, we sent. So it is uh, already uh, in progress because as project manager, I have um, selected uh, this status. Uh, but it can be a proposal, uh, for instance. So I can select it directly here. Okay, so it opens my uh, college jobs. Uh, well, um, just so you know, in WordB there are two different types of projects. So the, the, the standard projects for, um, for documents, uh, for instance, that will only be uh, translated once, large documents that you know that will only be translated once and call it projects. So it refers to automated projects and you'll create this type of projects for dynamic uh, content. Uh, for example, a, a catalog, uh, a website, etc. Uh, but content that uh, will be regularly updated. Okay, so I can see here uh, the job. If I if the translator clicks uh, on status, oh sorry, it's because I've put uh, I've selected in progress, so uh, now the translator doesn't have to uh, accept the job. It can directly uh, translate. I should have set a proposal, but basically it's just uh, one more step where where he accepts. Now he can directly click here on translate and reach the translation environment of WordB. Okay, so here uh, the translator can see that uh, there are pre-translations. So blue pre-translations for in-context matches. You can see that it comes from the memory uh, TM Jerry and also for, for the from the project itself, meaning that they are, uh, there is a repetition one or more repetition of this segment and in, in fact we can see here a, a repetition. Okay, so I will not obviously uh, translate the, the, the whole document. We can see here also uh, 100 person matches and we can see that it comes again from the translation memory of my client and in red it corresponds to fuzzy matches. Okay, so in this case, 99% uh, matches. So I'm the translator and I can uh, start uh, translating. Maybe I will just translate uh, this, this segment. Well, I will use machine translation And let, let's say that the translation in French is okay, so I will paste, paste sorry, the content directly to the segment. Okay, 
okay, and I will also uh, translate this uh, this segment. Well, you can see that words have been highlighted, while well, they correspond to matches also from the memory, but because the segment was not entirely, um, because what we could not uh, translate the whole uh, segment, they just appear uh, as terms. Okay. Okay, so I will uh, translate this segment. Alors, le Parlement européen utilise plus de 23 langues officielles. Voilà. Voilà, donc en tant que je me suis connectée en tant que Julien Saunier. Et donc, j'ai traduit ces deux segments. Je, uh, I can, uh, sorry, <laughs> so as, uh, as the translator Julien Saunier, I've translated two segments. I can leave a comment to the project manager or to the, uh, to the person involved also in the project. So to, I can leave a comment for the whole document or for a specific segment, for instance. So maybe um, for this segment, I want to leave a message. So I will click here on the little bubble. It will open the comments and discussion panel. Okay. So I can see here uh, the, the name of the, the segment. And maybe I will say, OK, um, do I have to translate EU. And here I can uh, click on the mail to send an email notification to the project manager. Uh, because uh, as for now, uh, only uh, Julien Sonnier uh, entered uh, the job. Okay. Uh, later on, when other translators will join, uh, he will be able to see uh, the other person involved and uh, send them also uh, the email notification. And I will send it to the project manager that will be able to answer me directly here. Okay. Now I will connect as another uh, translator. And I will continue uh, the translation. Okay, so we'll use uh, the supplier login we created. Okay, again, here I can see uh, the job. I will select it. And I will translate. So I can see uh, what, what has been done uh, by Julien. I can click here on the segment. And I can open the segment information panel. So I can open it by clicking here on the little eye icon. Okay. So I can see uh, that uh, this segment was uh, translated by Julien Saunier and I can see the date and, and time. Okay, same thing if I click here and same thing here. So I can see here that the, the, the segment uh, is not in French, so I will uh, translate it, again using uh, machine translation, because I'm sorry, I'm not uh, really good at translating. <laughs> okay, we say that the translation is okay. And I can again uh, translate this segment, blah, blah, blah. And here I can see that uh, comments has been, uh, has been made for this segment. 
Okay, now you can read it. Also, what I could have done is filter the text by comment segments so that I can see them directly. Okay, and myself, I can uh, leave a, a comment. Um, maybe uh, let me. Okay, maybe for for this uh, segment, what I want to say. Um, do I have to translate Yati? Okay, and same thing here as I showed you. I can leave this comment to the project manager and the other supply involved. Okay, the, the two of them have, have received a, an email notification now. Okay, so um, now I would like to show you um, has project manager. Uh, how I can track the the work progress and how I can see who has done what. Okay, so I will log out and connect again as project manager of the platform. So here is my project. So if I if I select it, I reach the documents tab, and to open the translation editor, I just need to right click on the document and click here on view segments. So I click here on view segments, and I can see uh, the translation uh, in real time. Okay, and uh, same thing as I showed you for, for the suppliers, if I click here and open the segment information panel, sorry, I can see that this segment has been translated by Julien Sonnier and Wen, etc. And if I click here, I can see uh, the translation of Julien Sonnier and then the modifications of Virginie Jean. Okay, um, I can filter by supplier, I can filter uh, the translated segments by supplier. If I click here on last change by, here I have the name of the two suppliers that have worked on the document. So if I click on Julien and then on apply, it will show me uh, what Julien has translated and same thing for Virginie. No, sorry, it's here. Okay. Uh, if I click here on revisions, oh well. Um, sorry, it should. Oh, yeah. Okay, here uh, I can see the number of uh, segments that uh, the the sup that each supplier has translated. So it will uh, help me for uh, the, for the word count when I would I would want to uh, create an invoice for each supplier. Okay. So I will click here on actions and copy uh, source segments to target because I do not want to uh, translate the, the whole document. Okay, and to finalize the document, uh, well, I can click here on preview and preview in browser. Okay, so, so I can see that uh, the, the layout is exactly the same as the 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 source document. I will uh, maybe open the source document so that you can see. 
Okay, so this is the source document. So I can see that the blue titles, okay, the font, uh, etc. It's the same. Okay. So what I can do now is launch a quality assurance check. So to do so, I will do it again. I click on the check icon and then new run advanced QA. And if I have uh, created a profile, uh, my supplier will be able to, to choose it here. Or I can customize it directly here. So here is the list of things you can check. So it is really exhaustive. So let's say I want to check uh, everything. Okay. Okay just need to click here on OK and then again here on OK to launch the check. The errors will be listed in the QA panel. Here OK. So uh, basically I would say that uh, it's really easy to track the work progress and to, to know exactly who has done what and, and when. You, you can really uh, track uh, everything easily and interact easily also with the suppliers involved in a project. So uh, just to finish, uh, I would like to uh, finalize uh, the document. So just to show you, I reached the status at tab. Oh, uh, I just need to to change here the status uh, to completed. So I click here on manage and set to completed. Okay, can close this window. And if I reach the status tab again, okay, you can see that the job has been completed. And I just need to click on finalize now. So we will rec reconstruct the, the translated document in the original formatting of the source document. Okay, the document has been finalized, so if I uh, reach the order, I will be able, I would just need to uh, copy the translated document uh, from the project uh, to the order. So, copy files from project. Okay, so uh, it is the French uh, translation. I just need to click here on OK. And now, with uh, his uh, login, the the client will be able to log again on his um, on his uh, space, where he can uh, create an order, and he will uh, be able to download his translated document directly here. Okay, so directly in his own space. So it is basically uh, what I wanted to show you. So I will I see that there are questions. So can can you use SDTrados with a uh, word B? Uh, well, um, how so? Uh, well, you can uh, manage the project in Word B and let your uh, supplier translate an XLIF uh, document that will allow them to translate directly in their SDL Trados. And then they, they should just re-import their, transla their translation in WordB so that it updates the, the translation memory of, um, of WordB. Okay. Uh, yeah, it updates the, the, the project memory. 
Uh, have I answered your questions? Your question, sorry. So you can create jobs that suppliers will download, translate, okay, using their, their SDL and re-import it in Word B. Are there uh, any other questions? No more questions? Well, uh, if you have further questions, do not hesitate to send them to me by email. I will type my email address again. Okay, so do not hesitate to send them to me by email. Well, I would like to thank you all for attending this webinar.